Hi guys. Man. Love you guys. Got another video. Another dream. Here we go. Another dream, another dream, another dream. Um, and I've just kind of like wrote them down, thought on them, waited to get some more information or anything else. So here we go. I was on a ship, but not like an oil tanker that big, and not a tiny small boat or whatever else. It was like a yacht, but not super fancy yacht, just a larger boat. Um, I don't know, I would say a 60-footer uh, or something like that, but it was big, 60, 75 feet. Um, and the captain was cruising along, we're out in the ocean, um, and I noticed there was this big window in the front that curved all the way around. A lot of boats have these. So you can see out in front, you know, and it got, waves started to get pretty big, you know, and the sky didn't change, but the waves started coming up. Which I thought, okay, normally you got a storm and then it gets gray and then you have these waves. So the waves were, were um, coming to the front of the boat and the boat was just up and down, up and down. And then the waves started coming over the, the cresting over the top of it and hitting the window. And I went, oh boy, All right? And it was just splash and splash and splash. So we went down into the bottom, not the bottom of the boat, but closer to where the window was. Um, and some some people were nervous, and I'm like, hey, aren't you, you know, be, it's okay, you know, nothing happens without God's, you know, authority and his decision and his will, right? Then the waves started covering over the bow, and the ship started going into the water, and I went, oh, wow, okay, this is really weird, right? And you can see the water level coming up over the glass, and just like my glasses here, look up over my glasses, right? And um, we were underwater. And I'm like, this is a ship. How is it underwater? What's going on? Right? And some of the people that were nervous were like, man, I don't care. So they're like, we're underwater, so what? Right? And But we're not, like, sinking. We're still going forward. Sorry, that was itching. And we're now underwater. I'm like, this is a convertible. This ship turned into a submarine. Weird, but it's a dream. Okay. You know, and we're going underwater. No big deal. Right? And I'm like... It's cruising along, no leaks, no problems, no whatever. It's completely sealed. There's oxygen. Okay, you know, so we're covered. And then snap, we're at dry dock. This big long ship is in the port, in the shipyard, and they're unloading it. And these guys with forklifts and everything else, and we're moving boxes. You know, I don't know why I'm there. I'm like, okay, complete scene change, boom. And as they're unloading it, I saw bombs, like not missiles, but like the warheads, like the tips of them. They were long and pointy, and I noticed they were like grayish blue, but they had red, red and white on it, and they had markings on it, and I couldn't tell. I mean, some of it kind of looked um, Russian. Some of some of them looked uh, um, like kanji, which is Chinese. You know, could be Korean. They're very specific looking, though. So it didn't really look Korean to me, you know. Um, I didn't think they were Japanese, but I knew that they were from a red army or a red country or red something, right? So I went over to one of the guys who was unloading it. I said, what are these? And he said, ah, they're nuclear. And I'm like, okay, but nobody's wearing hazmat or anything else. And I'm just like, oh, okay, interesting. You know, so I went from a ship to a submarine to now these uh, missile tip things you know, warheads or whatever, and then he tells me it's nuclear. So I'm like, okay, time to go, bye. And I got in the car, and I drove away. And I woke up. What does it all mean? Uh, to me, it sounds like war is coming. Um, to who and to where? I don't know. From who? Well, it sounds like somebody who's got a red flag. Or, you know, a red army or a, you know, Something, some country that's not quite so nice. Uh, so, you know, what's the solution to this? Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Um, he is the way to the truth that is eternal life that is given to him by the Father. Make sense? 
Yeah, no other name is given under heaven which a man may be saved. Jesus is the only way to everlasting life. And it's truthful. So what I'm saying is true. Okay? Um, time of grace is coming to an end. Repent. The trumpet is about to sound. Um, what's the timing and the time frame? I don't know. You know, I. it's been a few years that, you know, things are speeding up, ramping up, and the disclosure of, of what's going to come and what's happening. You know, the timing of it all? Well, I know that God tells his servants beforehand what he's about to do. You know, one, so, well, told you there's no excuse. Two, you can prepare and be ready. Three, God wants no one to perish. So, it's your choice to choose Jesus or reject him. If you reject Jesus, you're rejecting Father God. Jesus said so. So, my best choice of recommendation using wisdom is choose Jesus, choose life, because it's eternal life that goes on forever. This life lasts but a moment. When you think about in 2 Peter where it says, a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day to him. He's outside of time and space. And it goes on forever. Which is a hard concept to wrap your head around. Be like, okay, I got today, and then there's tomorrow, and then the next day. Okay. Days? Days, years, millennium, or centuries, millenniums, you know, the count. Does it really matter when there's a forever? No. But right now, your life is limited. So choose Jesus now while you still have breath in your in your body and your heart is still beating, which is by the grace of God he gives it. If he pulled it away, you're done. Okay? And I've told people before, we are one breath away from eternity. So this could be your last day, this could be your last hour, this could be your last minute. Or you could have many, many years. But at some point, the clock stops and we return to the earth and we're dust. There is a twinkling, changing of in the instance. You can read it in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 5 um, about an event where the dead will be raised and those that are still alive will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Boom! Okay. When's that all going to happen? That's God's timing. What should we do? Be prepared today. Watch for Jesus' return today. Repent from your sins today. Don't do those bad, evil, naughty, whatever, sinful things. Again, not tomorrow, the next day. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive them. Does that mean that's a revolving door and keep doing it? Absolutely not. But anyways, choose life, choose Jesus. Love you guys. See you in the next one.